Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about how to set up a canon roleplay. So what is a canon roleplay? A canon roleplay is anything that's centered around a fandom and relies heavily on that canon text of that fandom. So when it comes to canon roleplays, nobody wants to just rehash whatever it was that they read or watched. Okay, well like, maybe some people do, but that's not something that's going to make threads last very long or be very interesting for most roleplayers. So what we're going to do is talk about some different ways that we can do canon role plays that aren't just a rehash of canon. So first up, rewrite role plays. So rewrite role plays generally start at book one or in season one or whatever kind of the beginning of that canon is. And they take all of the stuff that happened previously before canon and make that part of the canon of their role play and then encourage everyone to write and move forward in a different direction than what canon actually did. You'll often see these whenever the last book is published in a series or whenever the last season of a TV show has finished airing, people will start making rewrite role plays. You'll often see interest in these whenever a particular show or book has finished their last installment. And what people will do is they'll do a rewrite role play to kind of get back into the fandom and make sure that it stays alive. You'll also see this whenever a particular season or book comes out that is not well received by fans. So what people will do then is keep the installments of that fandom that they liked that are popular and they'll do a rewrite of whatever book or season it is that was disliked by the fandom. So for example, whenever Vampire Diaries spun off and had the original start, you saw a lot of rewrite role plays that had seasons one through four of Vampire Diaries. And in that role play, the spinoff just never happened. And Vampire Diaries continued on with the Michelsons in it. So kind of related to this, but somewhat different, is also another flavor of canon role plays that I like to call sequel role plays. So these can have wildly different scopes depending on the situation. So for example, if you've got a TV show that you're role playing with, people might do a role play based off whatever episode it was that they just watched. So maybe there were scenes in that episode that were implied to happen, but weren't explicitly shown, and you might role play these scenes out. You might also do a role play of what you think happened after that episode before the next episode airs. So you'll largely see this flavor of it when you're talking about fandoms that are television shows. Or sequel role plays might have a really large scale. So think about next generation role plays in the Harry Potter fandom. People will take those characters that were mentioned in the epilogue like Scorpius and Albus and create whole role plays centered around those characters. These are really popular in those larger fandoms like Harry Potter, and it comes from the same kind of situation as a lot of rewrite role plays are, where people don't want the role play to end. So what they do is say, well, what happened next? What happened with the character's children? And things of that nature. Then related to sequel role plays, you might also do prequel role plays. So if we think about the Supernatural fandom, anytime that you see something that's in quote unquote Stanford era, this is a prequel role play. So when Supernatural starts, we know that before then, Sam attended Stanford, and we know that Dean was hunting with their father, and then Dean shows up and pulls Sam in since their dad is missing. And anything that happens before that event would be considered a prequel roleplay. So with the prequel roleplay, we know the ending that we're working towards, but we're filling in a lot of the stuff that isn't explicit in canon and is only applied. And this can be really fun because you know the ending and you get to fill in those blanks, you get to really do a lot of character development without having to think about like, okay, where are we actually going with this? So everything we've talked about so far relies completely or almost completely on canon. But what about role plays that don't do that? These would be called canon divergent role plays. So these are role plays that pick maybe pieces of canon that they want to keep and then they discard other pieces of canon. So maybe you really hate a particular plot point in canon. So if we think about The Flash as an example, if you're not a West Allen shipper, then you might not be so into the idea of their future child showing up from the future to kind of like do things in the present. There's a lot of time travel in Flash if you don't follow it. So it's, it's a little confusing, but this is something that happened in their canon. So you might make a role play that pulls out that particular plot point. Or there might be whole swaths of plot points that you're not into and you pull those out of canon and make them not part of your roleplay. We might also make something canon divergent by adding in plot points. This is really popular when it comes to shipping. So let's say, for example, you like everything about a particular canon, but your couple never gets together. So if you make a roleplay where they did and try to play out what happened in canon with them together, 
then that would be a canon divergent roleplay. So sort of related to that is when people take multiple fandoms and combine them into one. So when we think about Super Hulock, this is exactly what that fandom did. They took Supernatural, Doctor Who, and Sherlock and combined it into one universe and used it all to kind of roleplay together. And then kind of like a step moved from that would be an alternate universe roleplay. An alternate universe roleplay is going to be very canon divergent, because essentially all you're taking from canon is the characters, and you're putting them in an alternate universe. So with these alternate universe or AU roleplays, we're getting even farther away from canon. So if you think about those kind of combined universe roleplays that we talked about, it's kind of like that, but a little bit more specific. So if you want to have a roleplay set in a certain universe, let's say the Pokemon universe, but all of your friends are roleplaying Glee characters, maybe you make a roleplay that imagines what would happen if the Glee characters were all in a Pokemon universe. So it's really common when it comes to independent roleplay for people to imagine what their character would be like in other universes. And this makes it really easy to roleplay those characters across the different universes. So this is kind of how Super Hulock started and then it became really big. But there's other ones that are really common too. Like back when Vampire Diaries and Teen Wolf were both really popular, it was super common for Vampire Diaries role players to have Teen Wolf universes for their characters and vice versa as well. So if we think about canon divergent role plays and alternate universe role plays, this is also what we're doing when we set up multi-fandom role plays. So what a multi-fandom role play is, is a role play that accepts lots of different fandoms. They might have a plot hook that specifically talks about like a character being pulled from one universe into another universe and them getting combined, or it might be a role play that has a specific setting and that role play just allows you to adopt your fandom character into that role play if you want to. So the difference between these is when you have that specific plot that talks about characters being taken from one universe into another, your character still has all of the exact same past that they had in their canon. And if we're talking about the role plays where it's like a universe, but they let you adapt your character, then that character doesn't have the same past. You would have to rework their canon past into something that fits that particular setting. So just like a lot of the different things we've talked about in my various videos, there's no clear line between these different things. You can mix and match. You can kind of take a little bit from one, but really be doing another. The lines are really blurry. But these are all ways that you can take a canon roleplay experience and really make it interesting and really make it last for a long time. So if you've not done a lot of canon roleplay in the past, I hope this gives you a little bit of inspiration to go kind of give it a try on your own and see if you can make it work for you. So remember to like if you like this video, comment down below with any questions that you have, subscribe for more videos, click that bell for notifications, all of the links to my social media down in the doobly-doo. Thank you so much for watching and make it a great day.